Once again, I'm going to be revisiting old technology for use in current problems. One of the things I found with the touch devices is that most are now capacitive based devices. So for your touch screens or your trackpads on laptops, it uses a capacitive feature and this relies on the electrical connectivity of your finger or a stylus that's conductive. But the old hard plastic stylus like this pen is not going to work. Now there are situations where folks use either a prosthetic device or a stylus and very often a long fingernail to try to to move their trackpad around and that just won't work with a capacitive one. Well the older technology which you found in Palm Pilots of days of yore and older gaming handheld gaming systems used a resistive touch. Now this relies on pressure being applied to different points and depending on where you're at it gives the results back. So in this case it works better with some sort of hard contact surface. It works better with a fingernail or a stylus or similar than it does with just the, the tip, the pad of your finger. So there's pros and cons. It's an older technology, but it is still, you know, very useful for certain use cases. So I decided to take this and turn it into something that looks nice, or at least I think it looks nice. So this is a 3.7 inch resistive touch screen that I have made an enclosure for and it includes the sensor itself, it includes a controller board and then there's a cutie pie inside that does the computer communication through USB-C. So if you're interested in making one of these on your own, you're going to need a couple of different things. You'll need a the printed parts which I provide on my GitHub site. So there's three printed parts which I'll show you in a second. The resistive touch screen itself, touch controller, a cutie pie or similar. Now I recommend a star or quick connector based board because then you don't even have to solder. To hold the whole thing together you're going to need a total of eight M24 screws. Four of them are going to be used to hold the controller board. Four of them will use, be used as an inside mount. Now the outside of the case is going to use M2 12 screws for the enclosure. So these are ones I happen to have on hand. And if you are going to be wiring this with the stemmer or the quick connect, you're going to want a JST SH4 pin. And 50 millimeter is long enough. That's about the smallest one you normally see. So it's the little cable that will go between the controller and the microcontroller. So once you've had that stuff, let me show you how it all fits together. It's kind of like a magic box here. So this is the front and what happens is you take your display, so you get a, you'll get the sensor display that looks like this and it simply snaps, slips into that space there. And there's a cutout for the cable so that it doesn't get crimped. Now, uh, normally you then peel back this protective film, but I'm not doing that for these test versions because this is the black strip there is adhesive. So I don't, I want to be able to take this apart. So not going to deal with that. Uh, also helpful hint, at first I thought it was this side that had the touch, but it's this side so it's the one with the green is what's going to register the touch if you try pressing down on the back side it doesn't work so that was one of the things that required me to modify my model a bit the other part is an insert that goes inside and this holds two things this is the TSC 2007 touch controller so this is what the touch sensor will get plugged into and then in my case I'm using a cutie pie SAMD 21 I know these are in short supply now but uh, if you find any sort of cutie pie form factor or similar uh, 
you could use it. Uh, in this case, I mean, this is the JST cable, the quick connect cable that handles the I squared C and the power between the boards. So no soldering at all. What you'll find here, this is where you're gonna use your first set of M24 screws. There's four of them that I have holding the board. The cutie pie I have press fit into here and then I use a little bit of double faced tape or double taste foam tape to hold it in place. For permanent, I might hit it with a little bit of hot glue. It's not beautiful, but it works. So these two components get mounted and they get the cable between them. And then the whole thing presses down into here like so. And then the cable from the sensor, the touch sensor, gets pressed into there, into that connector there. Make sure it's firmly seated. That's all the wiring you have to do. That's it. Then uh, to button it up, and there's enough clearance, I've set it up so you could just lay it like that while you're debugging and testing. Uh, you don't have to close it up completely. And then if you want to close it up completely, I have this back panel, and this is what's using the uh, M2 12 screws. Oh, before I forget, where those other M2, okay, the M24, there's one there, one there, one there, one there. So not in the corners. The not in the corners one are the ones that sandwich this all together. So put those in once you've done those then it's the m212 screws and that will go like that i'm redoing this part a little bit to make it a little bit thicker and to round over the edges the model i have up there right now has uh, square edges so i'm going to change that so once that's all together you plug in your usb and you get onto the coating so there's the hardware portion of this resistive touch pad using old technology for current problems. If you want to get at the files, they will be always at my GitHub site. If you are looking to purchase a complete version of this, I will be selling these on my Etsy shop along with all my other joysticks, 7 Mile Mountain at Etsy.com. And if you have any questions or emails, you could email at my Gmail account which I usually try to respond pretty quickly. Also, because I am in a position where I'm trying to make this my full-time job and this is my source of income, funds are obviously always short, especially for research and development. So if you'd like to help by purchasing parts or doing financial donations, please send me an email or send me a PayPal to that email address and it is very much appreciated. Every dollar, every part that is donated goes into new products like this. New and All of my stuff is open source, so if folks want to make their own version of it, they could certainly do that. So thanks for watching, and uh, the next part of this is going to focus on the code and what we're actually going to do with this.